Hello there, seventh graders. This is Mr. Kashi speaking. As you can see, that I won't be in class again today, um, but we will be still going be going through the lesson on three form. Um, our schedule for the day is up on the board. We have uh, if, tens, if attendance hasn't been taken already, uh, the sub should uh, do so and um, get that down to the office. Second thing we'll be doing is going over the homework. Uh, we will be correcting it, even though um, I'm not there. And uh, three, four, we are going to go over, um, I believe, three examples on multiplying mixed numbers. Not a whole lot different than yesterday, um, but we'll go through those examples. And then there is an assignment. It is a worksheet, and there will be some work time, plenty of work time to do that. So um, hopefully you'll get the assignment done in class and won't have any homework. So what you need out right now is your writing utensil, notebook, and your assignment and your assignment uh, you should also have a correcting pen out as well because we'll be correcting on the next slide now these are the answers to the homework so if you can correct it yourself at your desk you know how to correct you if it's correct leave it alone if it's incorrect you need to put a slash through it um, you have to every incorrect answer needs a little s or a little d s means you know what went wrong d means you do not know what went wrong and remember to put the number incorrect at the top. I'm going to move on but have the sub pause this slide so you guys can see this for as long as you need to correct your assignment. Moving on, 3, 4, multiplying mixed fractions, mixed numbers. Okay, mixed numbers. So that's what we need, just, the, just what's written in blue in your notes. The objective for today by the end of the class period, you will be able to multiply two mixed fractions together and find an accurate product. Okay, product being the answer to a multiplication problem. Okay, so steps to multiplying mixed numbers. one okay the first step is we need to do around the horn around the horn and we will have an improper fraction once we're done with around the horn improper in parentheses okay two is we're going to multiply across just like we learned yesterday and multiply across with the improper fractions and then three like with any like with any um, fraction problem we always have to simplify at the end okay so those are your three steps around the horn to get both mixed numbers into an improper fraction trust me it's gonna be a lot easier to use improper fractions when we're multiplying Okay. Then we're going to multiply straight across, and more often than not, when we're multiplying these improper fractions, we are going to get a very large fraction somewhere, Okay, and we will need to simplify. You almost always have to simplify when you're multiplying. Okay. If you still need this, have the sub pause it, but I have to move on for the sake of time. Okay. So this will be our first example. Okay, multiply two and three fifths times four and one half. Record that in your notes. This is our first example that we'll be completing together. So like I said before, the first thing that we need to do is do around the horn. Okay, so two and three fifths, what we have to do is we have to do two times five is ten, plus three is thirteen. So 13 over 5 is our new fraction for 2 and 3 fifths. Same thing over here. We have 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 is 9. So we have 9 over 2 as our new fraction for 4 and 1 half. Okay. Now we still are multiplying. That comes down as well. Okay. So there's no, nothing new there. Okay, so on the bottom, we multiply across 5 times 2, that's going to give us 10. And now 13 times 9, hmm, 
13 times 9. Well, 10 times 9 would be 90. 3 times 9 is 27. 117. One seventeen is up there. Okay, so now we have to simplify. We have to put this back into a mixed number. Okay, so obviously this is still an improper fraction. One seventeen over ten. We can't do that. We don't want our answers in decimal form either. So ten goes into one seventeen. I believe it goes in there eleven times. Okay, eleven times. So eleven times ten would be one hundred and ten. And we have 7 left over. So the 7 comes down here. And we have 10 there. 11 and 7 tenths would be our answer. Now let's take a look. <clears throat> if we go back up to the top, if we do, let's, uh, let's take this 2 and 3 fifths. Let's, um, let's put that up to uh, 3. Okay? 2 and 3 fifths, let's estimate that to be 3, and let's just put the 4 and a half down to 4. Okay, 3 times 4 would be 12. 12 is pretty close to 11 and 7 tenths, so we know our answer is correct if we estimate correctly. All right, so that is the first example. I'll give you a little time just to record that down in case you, in case you were listening instead of writing, and then we'll be moving on here pretty quick. All right, our next example is 2 and 1 third times 4 and 5 eighths, okay? So we have to do 1, do around the horn, 2, multiply, and 3, simplify. So around the horn first, we do 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 1 is 7. So we have 7 up top and 3 on the bottom. 7 is our numerator, 3 is our denominator. That is our improper fraction for two and one third. Over here for four and five eighths, four times eight gives us thirty two plus five gives us thirty seven. Thirty seven over eight. Okay, and we are still multiplying, that does not change at all. Okay. Now we have to multiply across. Three times eight gives us 24. 7 times 37, do that over here on the side. Okay, 7 times 7 gives us 49. Put the 9 down, carry the 4. 3 times 7 is 21, plus the 4. 259. Okay, 259. So 259 over 24, obviously this is an improper fraction. We have to reduce that. We have to simplify that down to its simplest form. How many times does 24 go into 259? Okay. Well, if we were to multiply 24 by 10, we would get 240. 240. Okay. And so I believe that would be... Um, how many times it would go in without going over. So 240 and 259, yep, that's all it would be going into. So 24 goes into 259 10 times. What's left over? What we have to do is we have to go 259 minus 240, and we get 19. Okay, so 10, what's left over? 19, and the 24 stays the same. All right. Ten and nineteen twenty fourths. Now, this is in simplest form. We know that because nineteen is a prime number and nineteen does not go into twenty four evenly. Okay? So because these fractions are getting so high, all right, because these fractions, you know, two hundred and fifty nine, that's that's a pretty high number. And I don't want you guys to be um, spending too much time on just the, the calculation of simplifying the fractions. So during the homework, I will let you use a calculator to help simplify here. All right, we do have one more example that I want to go through. It is a word problem. OK, 
Okay. Mr. Kashi's workbench is three and three fourths of a yard, three and three fourths yards long, and one and two thirds yards wide. What is the area of Mr. Kashi's workbench? Okay. <clears throat> so we what we have is three and three fourths, and we have to multiply. Okay, if we're finding the area, we have to multiply the length and the width. Okay, so three and three fourths times one and two thirds. First step always is around the horn. Three times four is twelve, plus three is fifteen. We keep the fourths. Fifteen fourths is the same as three and three fourths. Okay. 1 times 3 is 3, plus 2 is 5. 5 thirds is your improper fraction for 1 and 2 thirds. Okay, and we are still multiplying. Okay, we multiply across. 4 times 3 gives us 12 as our denominator. And 15 times 5, let's do that over to the side. 15 times 5. Well, 5 times 10 would be 50. 5 times 5 is 25. We get 75 there. 75. Now, 75 over 12 is not in the simplest form. It is still an improper fraction. We have to simplify that down to a mixed number. Let's see. 12 can go into 75 how many times? Well, 4 times 12 would be 48. 5 times 12 would be 60. 6 times 12 would be 72. So we can go in there 6 times total. We have 3 of those 12s left. We can also simplify 3 twelfths down to, let's divide this by 3, divide that by 3, and we will get 6 and 1 fourth. Okay. So those are the three examples that uh, that we wanted to cover today. Uh, you do have a worksheet for your homework, and I'll be taking questions on that um, when you get back uh, for our next class period. All right. So you have plenty of work time to try and get this done before um, our next class period, and um, it will be the three four worksheet, and it should be being handed out to you right about now. Okay. So good luck on that. We'll see you guys later. Have a good rest of the day and keep your stick on the ice.